correctly identify patients presenting with unexplained syncope who warrant hospitalization. Uh, we have no disclosures. So, uh, syncope is a syndrome consisting of a relatively short period of self-limited loss of consciousness caused by transient diminution of blood flow to the brain. The incidence of self-reported syncope is approximately 6.2 per 1,000 person years in the Framingham study with a cumulative incidence of 3 to 6 per 1,000 over 10 years with the prevalence reaching almost 50%. In the United States, up to 1 to 2 million patients are evaluated for syncope annually, um, making up for approximately 5% of ED visits and 1 to 6% of urgent hospital admissions. So despite overwhelming clinical trial evidence, expert opinion, national guidelines, and a vast array of conferences, evidence-based life-saving therapies continue to be underutilized. New approaches to improving the use of proven, guideline-recommended, life-saving therapies are clearly needed. Uh, implementation of critical pathways and management plans for hospitalized patients is becoming a mainstream in achieving the goal of optimal quality of care. In 2004, uh, we developed a program called the Advanced Cardiac Admission Protocol Program. Uh, it was implemented at St. Luke's and Roosevelt Hospital in New York. It consisted of tools and strategies for implementing the ACC and AHA guidelines. Um, at this point, we have eight state-of-the-art pathways in management of various cardiac conditions. These include the pain pathway for uh, chest pain, including STEMI and STEMI, the heart failure pathway, the race pathway for atrial fibrillation and flutter, um, pathways for the management of hypertension and hyperglycemia in critical and uh, cardiac care units, the cell pathway for syncope, which I'll be talking about in detail, as well as the escape pathway for sudden cardiac death prevention and the MOCA pathway for the management of uh, hospital cardiac arrest. The key features of the ACAP program is that it doesn't, it doesn't just involve the cardiologist, it involves caregivers across the continuum of care, and especially uh, involves building strong partnerships with the emergency room physicians. Uh, the tools uh, and the plans are directly derived from the published guidelines, uh, but it still allows um, some flexibility for local adaptation. Um, we use uh, opinion leaders and attendings and specialists for input. We involve patients in their care as well as their follow-up. And the data that we've collected so far has been used to change the behavior of the caregivers and the patients uh, and reevaluate the effectiveness of the approach. So I just have images of a few more pathways. This is the pain pathway. Uh, we're stratifying the patients into priority, advanced, intermediate, and negative risk, um, and with the appropriate uh, management following that. This is the race pathway for atrial fibrillation and flutter, um, the hypertension pathway, and the escape pathway for um, prevention of sudden cardiac death. Um, so I'll be talking about the self pathway for the management of syncope. As I said before, all the several guidelines have been published uh, for the diagnostic approach. Uh, none have invalidated respectively, and none apply to every clinical situation encountered. Um, most guidelines do not specify the level of detail, and they provide a, only a framework to approach the diagnostic evaluation. So we developed the self pathway in 2006. It provides a simple yet comprehensive uh, guideline for the management of all patients, presenting to the ED with a complaint of syncope or pre-syncope. So if we take a look at our, our syncope pathway here, any patient that comes into the ED gets an initial uh, history and physical exam along with a 12 EDKG uh, and basic lab work. Um, the history is important in figuring out whether it is true syncope or not. Uh, the, there's four criteria that needs to be met for categorization of true syncope, and that uh, is embodied in the self uh, name. S is for short period and self-limited. E is for early rapid onset. L is for loss of consciousness, and uh, F is for full recovery. Um, it must fit all four criteria to be considered true syncope. Uh, patients with no uh, loss of consciousness or prolonged loss of consciousness are not part of this group. Um, in true syncope, we, if there's a suspected diagnosis, we evaluate for any uh, nearly immediate diagnosis, uh, basovagal or situational, any orthostatic or cerebrovascular causes. Um, in unexplained syncope, uh, we admit the patients, it's recommended that we admit the patients to telemetry for 24 hours and perform an uh, echo as well. So this is the second self-pathway part of the uh, pathway. The S here uh, 
refers to the structural heart disease, um, including systolic dysfunction, uh, any other valvular abnormalities. The E refers to the abnormal EKG, uh, including any uh, any bundle blocks or long QT or Brugada syndrome. And the L and F refer, refer to uh, age of heart fibrillation and any other brady and tachyarrhythmias uh, noted on telemetry. And and they're and they're managed appropriately uh, uh, to wherever they. The aim of our study was that to assess the long-term outcome in patients presented to the ED with unexplained presyncope or syncope. The primary endpoint was a composite of readmission for syncope, MI, stroke, and all-cause mortality. The follow-up period was just more than a year. So according to our standardized care under the ECAP program, all patients presenting with a diagnosis of syncope to the hospital were included in a prospective institutional registry and consented for follow-up. 765 consecutive patients presenting with unexplained pre syncope syncope between September 2007 and January 2009 were included in this analysis. Patients were divided into those admitted to the hospital, group A, and those discharged from the ED as a group B. And uh, further therapeutics, diagnostic tools, and outcome were reviewed and analyzed. The cell pathway was implemented using uh, easy to understand pathways, printed, color coded, standardized admission and discharge forms. Uh, as well as educational lectures and materials given to the house staff, as well as the emergency department physicians. Uh, resident admission notes were collected and entered into an integrated database, including all labs, admissions, and medications. The form, the first form that you see there, all the way to the left, is a general admission form, which, uh, is, which is used for all form pathways. The middle form over here is syncope specific cell form. Uh, and again, it follows the, the cell criteria that I was showing. I was talking about earlier. Uh, the form to the right is the cardiac discharge summary where the patient is informed of their medical condition, uh, the workup that they've had, as well as drugs and home monitoring and uh, follow up um, is advised. So, statistical analysis was performed using um, uh, SBSS. Patient groups were compared using student t tests for continuous variables, chi score tests for uh, categorical variables, and analysis of variance for independent. Um, Cox proportionalizing model was used to assess the effect of implementation of pathway on the patient's outcomes. Um, p value of less than 0 0.05 was used to denote statistical significance. So, comparing the uh, admitted patients to the discharged patients, you can see that in general, the group A, uh, they're older, uh, more of them were hypertensive, diabetic, uh, smokers, and dyslipidemic. They also had a significantly higher, um, uh, higher percentage of coronary artery disease, heart failure, and syncope history. Um, consequently, they were also on more uh, uh, medications at home, including aspirin, uh, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, diuretics, uh, ACE inhibitors, and ARVs, and statins. Um, comparing the EKG and echo characteristics of our patients, um, the, the EKG intervals, including the PR, QRS, and QTC interval, uh, were prolonged in, in the event patients, although the injection fraction uh, was not significant between the two groups. Um, the most common presenting signs and symptoms um, that we documented was that there was increased dizziness, a shortness of breath, uh, hematocrit of less than 30, presenting as anemia, uh, acute decompensated heart failure, and abnormal EKG. So um, we distributed our um, patients according to the San Francisco syncope rule, uh, which is um, considered by five factors, the uh, congestive heart failure, uh, hematocrit less than 30, uh, abnormal EKG, um, so triage to solid blood pressure less than 90 and uh, shortness of breath. Uh, as you can see, uh, the discharge patients had a very low uh, risk score uh, according to the, the SFSR rule. Um, consequently, when they used our pathways, I think there was, uh, there was increased uh, discharges as well compared uh, to the SFSR rule. Um, so follow was done in one year and uh, the admitted patients had significantly worse outcome including uh, readmission for syncope, uh, myocardial infarction, uh, percutaneous motor intervention, uh, TIAs and strokes, as well as increased mortality. So this is our capitalized survival curve showing that uh, the admitted patients had a significantly uh, worse outcome than our discharged patients. So uh, multivariate logistic regression predictors of outcome show that uh, diabetes and age were the most uh, predictive uh, factors in both uh, our, in our groups.
So the conclusion uh, for today is that uh, the routine utilization of a standardized clinical pathway for patients presenting with unexplained syncope uh, identifies, effectively identifies patients who merit hospitalization for further workup. Um, this has important implications for the education and management of a common disease uh, that poses significant economic burden on healthcare utilization. Um, if you'd like to know more about our pathways, uh, you can visit our website, uh, nycardiologypathways.org. And on behalf of my colleagues at the ACAP program,